cup of coffee, sit back and listen to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life features stories to inspire and motivate you. Live your best life now. Listen, learn, think, and decide. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Visit CYACYL.com. Welcome to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. I'm Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in. Do you often try to implement radical life changes only to slip back into comfortable habits? According to today's guest, health and wellness expert Kathy Freston, it's time to change the counterproductive it's all or nothing mentality and try a powerful method that can be an effective way to achieve positive lifestyle change. Kathy promotes an approach to health and happiness that includes a healthy diet, emotional introspection, spiritual practice, and loving relationships. She's here today to discuss the proven value of leaning into change and why we shouldn't try to break a lifetime of bad habits overnight. Kathy's a New York Times bestselling author whose newest book is entitled The Lean, a revolutionary and simple 30-day plan for healthy, lasting weight loss. Kathy's appeared on The Oprah Winfrey Show, Ellen, The Dr. Oz Show, The View, Good Morning America, The Martha Stewart Show, and on The Oprah Winfrey Network. Her work has been featured in Vanity Fair, Harper's Bazaar, Self, W, and Fitness. Kathy's a regular contributor to The Huffington Post. Kathy, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me on. Kathy, I am very excited about you being here because you have helped thousands of people change their body naturally. And you say that it's possible for people over the age of 35 to achieve amazing results without surgery or fad diet. So I'm telling you now, I'm in. Sign me up. <laughs> and, you know, you, you also say that with your plan, we can actually see these type of results in 30 days. Sure can. You're going to see weight loss uh, right away. You're going to see your health changing. Um, within the first week, the weight's going to start to drop off. Within the second week, your blood sugar and your blood pressure will be going down. And within the third week, your cholesterol is dropping significantly. So pretty much across the board, you're going to see uh, some wonderful physical effects. Plus, you're going to start feeling differently. You're going to feel like you're in control of your eating, in control of your health, and, uh, you know, all those habits that sort of held you uh, captive for so many years are going to shift in a really wonderful way. So I know people are now sitting at home saying, okay, I'm in too. So what is it exactly that we're talking about? What is so different about your program? I'm going to tell you two things that this program is all about. It's, one, it's, called, it's about leaning in. Okay, so leaning in means that you're not going to change everything radically overnight. You're going to get your toes in the water. You're going to start with some very easy uh, habits, and you're going to gradually move toward healthier ways of being. And Kathy, just to interrupt for a moment, I think that that is a very important key because so many of us, we start these programs and we're really gung-ho and we're, you know, we're doing everything that we're told. And a couple of weeks or months into it, we get tired of it or it just becomes too difficult. We quit and we slip back and it's this vicious cycle that we go through over and over again. Exactly. And then we beat ourselves up. We feel terrible that we couldn't stick with it. And because we feel terrible, we stuff ourselves, (laughs) you know, we punish ourselves and then we punish ourselves for for what we eat. And we get this yo-yo weight thing going on and we're miserable for years. And that is no way to live. I don't think we should be hardcore disciplined in our lives. That, you know, that's not what life is about. Life is, is about growing and evolving as a human being and doing important things in the world. It's not about hyper-focusing on our food and, and weighing, uh, you know, grams of protein and calories and things like that and being obsessed with it. I think we should just subtly change the chemistry in our body by adding in a few more habits And then it becomes easy. It becomes natural. It's kind of like a magic thing. Your body just changes. Your mindset just changes because you're doing it gradually. You're not doing something that's so difficult. So, for instance, on the first day of the LEAN, the LEAN program is the 30-day plan to, to healthy, lasting weight loss, the first day is just adding in eight glasses of water a day. 
easy enough. So, so the point is you're going to say, oh, okay, I can do this. I can, that's just getting my toes in the water. That's not a big deal. But just by adding in eight glasses of water a day, eight ounces of water, eight times a day, you're going to start feeling very differently because water affects your metabolism as it, as it does every single uh, function in your body. Metabolism requires that you're well hydrated in order to to work well. And in fact, there was a uh, study uh, in 2010 that showed that people who drink two cups of water before every main meal lost on average five pounds of fat uh, more than people who didn't drink water in a 12-week period. So that's doing nothing else except for adding in water. And you drink some water before your meals. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, I don't like water. It's just so boring. And like with everything, it's just a habit. So I say first thing in the morning, have your glass of water right by your bedside. You wake up, you swig it down. And that it's funny because when you drink water, you start to lose water weight also because mm-hmm. it gets the process of just cleaning out your body. So the fluid re- retention goes away. You're not quite as bloated. Your metabolism sort of kicks into gear. You're not quite as ravenous because right before the meal you've had two cups of water and you see you're leaning in. I'm not saying you have to take away your cookies or your pies or your burgers or anything like that. I'm just saying lean in gently. And each step is kind of like that. You're leaning into something that's really doable, really practical, and you're going to see results pretty quickly. I think that's a great approach because I actually have a a girlfriend who wanted to lose weight and she started this program and it it, it is a a healthy way of living program so it's in the right direction but it was very radical it was almost like okay tonight I'm going to eat this gallon of ice cream because tomorrow I'm going to start my quote-unquote diet and my healthy eating way and it was very radical she had to change everything and like I said about eight weeks into the program she was like oh you know I really don't have time to do this juicing and to do this and and she stopped so, yeah, of course, and it's not fun, and I think that's why diets don't work a lot of the time, too, is because we're miserable in our lives, you know. We feel like we're deprived, uh, there's too much uh, discipline, and there's too many hardcore rules, and it's just we don't feel like we're eating anything yummy, and we're not part of our community and our family, and it's like we're sidelined into this strange, crazy way of eating, and I I think that life is not meant to be lived like that. We're meant to enjoy our lives and um, participate with our family and our communities. We're, We're meant to feel full. We're meant to feel happy and satisfied and fulfilled. You know, we're not meant to starve, and we're not meant to go in these crazy, crazy rules. So this is, this is a plan that's very, very healthy, that's very geared toward making you feel full. And this is the second component of the book, and it's called crowding out. So you're not only leaning in, but you're also crowding out the, the old habits and things that used to put weight on, take away your energy, make you feel guilty about things. So in the lean plan, I'm going to have you add in so many things, but they're little things. They're, you're not even going to feel put out by it. For instance, you're going to add in eating an apple a day. I'm not saying take anything out. I'm just saying add in an apple a day. So when you add in an apple a day, you're crowding out room in your stomach, room in your belly for other food because apples have this very powerful fiber called pectin. And pectin is twice as effective as other regular fiber because it stays in your belly twice as long. So that means your belly feels fuller twice as long as regular fiber and it empties very slowly and it gets your blood sugar, your, your glucose to release very, very slowly. So it's changing your body's chemistry. And when you add in an apple a day, you are going to see amazing, amazing benefits, not only with your weight loss, but also in how you feel health-wise. You know, there's been lots of studies on how apples have this, uh, these powerful phytochemicals that, that really uh, prevent cancer, that um, kill, um, you know, infection in your body. It, it's really amazing. So, again, you're going to lose your hunger, you're going to feel full, and you're going to start feeling healthier. Kathy, what would you say to that person who 
just has that mindset of, of needing overnight results. I mean, I when I was reading your book, I was laughing because I kept thinking about all the times that, you know, I wanted to lose five pounds a week. But if I had just done it wisely yeah. and did a half a pound a year later when I'm still the same weight that I was a year ago, yeah. I could have been 30 or 40 pounds lighter if yeah. I just had patience. So what do you yeah. say to that person? Well, healthy weight loss is about one to three pounds per week. And you don't want to lose any more than that because it's not real weight. A lot of the times, like these um, high-protein, low-carb diets, it's a lot of water weight, and it's unnatural for your body. Your body rebels, and then you gain back all the weight plus about 5% over the course of two years. So, you know, if you had done it in a healthy way, like you said, one pound to three pounds per week, you know, in 50 weeks, if you say you're, you're losing only a pound a week, which you probably are going to lose more, you've lost, you know, 50 pounds for good, right. forever. It's done. You know, I, I have a friend who, who has just gone through it, and she's lost 50 pounds in 50 weeks, and she said, no problem, happy, happy to do it this slowly. One, because it was comfortable. Her world wasn't shaken up. Her world was, you know, she, she just sort of leaned into these, shift so that she could find her footing and shift gradually into this new lifestyle. So it was comfortable for her. You know, we need to find our way. It took a lifetime of doing things the way we used to do them to get to where we are. It's going to take a little bit of getting used to to shift into these new habits. So why hit ourselves over the head and be uncomfortable about it? And the results are worth it. when it stays, when it stays off, it's like, great, not a problem. I'd rather lose it in a healthy, slow way so that it lasts. And it becomes a way of life then. It's not a diet. It's just a way of eating. It's just a way of eating. And you don't think about it anymore. I mean, once it starts happening, your brain chemistry changes. The, the, the way your brain releases dopamine and serotonin, the feel-good chemicals, is going to shift. The way you crave food is going to shift. Your blood sugar is going to straighten out so you're no longer going to be on that crazy emotional roller coaster where you're craving and then, you know, hoarding food and, you know, wondering when you're going to get your next hit. And then all that stuff is just going to go away. It's going to shift because you're going to start feeding your body things that are full of fiber. Fiber is the one component that the research, the scientific research, consistently cites to creating lasting healthy weight loss, sustainable weight loss. So you have to have that fiber. Fiber, by the way, is not found in any animal foods. So no no yogurt or no meat or chicken or milk or anything like that, eggs. There's no fiber in any animal foods. Fiber is only found in plant-based foods. So in the lean, I gradually move you away from animal foods because that's where all the saturated fat is and, and the, the no fiber and the inflammatory protein. And we're going to move you toward plant foods like, you know, chickpeas and lentils and tofu and brown rice and quinoa and meat alternatives like veggie burgers and lots of nice vegetables and, you know, fruits and things like that. But it's gradual. It's a shift that you're going to feel full and satisfied and really energized by. Kathy, we need to take a break. We'll be right back. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life now has a free monthly digital magazine that can be read online or emailed to your inbox. Each month, nationally recognized leaders in their field provide the information that you need to inspire and motivate you. We believe in a holistic approach to life incorporating mind, body, and spirit. As philosopher Francis Bacon said, knowledge is power. Use the wisdom provided in the publication and apply it to your everyday life. Visit CYACYL.com for more information or to begin your free subscription. That's CYACYL.com. Welcome back to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. I'm Joan Herman, and our guest today is health and wellness expert Kathy Freston. Kathy's here today to talk about the importance of leaning in when making lifestyle changes. Kathy, before break, we were talking about leaning in in relationship to weight loss, but you also say that this can apply to all areas of our lives, and when we make one tiny shift, we can make a major difference in our life. So 
What are you talking about when you say a shift? I'm saying change up something in your daily habits. You know, if you keep doing the same thing over and over again, you're going to keep getting the same result. So when you shift something, even a tiny little shift, everything just kind of changes. It's amazing how that happens. It like alters the course of your life in ways that you can't even see. It's an incredible thing. I used to be a smoker. I smoked a pack of cigarettes a day. This is many years ago, of course. But I, I tried throwing the pack away. I, th- I tried, uh, you know, acupuncture. I tried hypnosis. I tried just willing myself to do it. But I thought I'm going to just lean in, you know. I'm going to lean into this process of being a non-smoker. I'm going to set my intention, and I'm going to find resources that help me. I found a support group. I crowded out my habit with doing a little bit more exercise or going to a movie or making sure I was booked up with friends, so I crowded out the time that I would have been smoking. So it's like with anything, even if you want to leave a destructive relationship and start some new stage of your life in that area, you can lean in by just sort of, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to, I don't know how to break up overnight. I don't know how to make my life happen overnight, but I'm just going to do one tiny thing. I'm just going to call the local bicycling group and I'm going to sign up and I'm just going to start going on rides. That's the one little thing that I'm going to do, right? And so little or little by little, you start to feel better. You add in one more habit. Say you, say you then decide, you know what, maybe I think I'm going to go to a, a fellowship group and get a little emotional support for people who are going through bad relationships or something. The more you just do a little thing, changing things up a bit, ways to affirm yourself, ways that advocate for yourself that you say, I find myself important enough and worthwhile enough that I'm just going to make a tiny little shift to advocate for myself. And as you do that, you build up a little bit more self-esteem, a little bit more pride, a little bit more joy in your life, and you start this process of momentum little by little. When I started eating healthier, for instance, I grew up in the South. I grew up in in Atlanta, Georgia, eating fried chicken and chicken fried steak and barbecued ribs and every kind of cheese and sodas and everything. And when I decided I wanted to get healthy, I thought, oh my gosh, I don't even know the first thing to eat. I, I, I have no idea. I mean, this is the way that I've eaten. My mom told me it was good stuff and not like I'm a bad person. She's not a bad person. This is just what I know. And it was overwhelming. But I just set my intention. I said, you know what? I want to be somebody who is healthy, who eats healthy, who feels good, who has energy. I don't know how I'm going to get there, but I'm just going to lean into it. And that's when I started adding in just a tiny little habit that made me feel good, whether it was eating an apple a day, that would go on for a week, then I'd add in the water, that would go on for a week, then I'd add in something else, maybe I'd take away something, I lost my craving for sugar. And little by little, I became the healthy happy person that I'd visualized. And it came from setting my intention, nudging myself forward ever so slightly, leaning into this shift and building a momentum. And that momentum carried me into my path of being a healthy, happy person, little by little. Kathy, before we run out of time, we have a couple of minutes left. You developed eight pillars of wellness. Very briefly, what are these pillars and why are they so impactful? I think that wellness is not just a physical thing. I think it's a, a, it's a body, mind, soul thing. So we have to be well on all these different levels. One of the pillars is meditation and just to be quiet and listen to the still small voice inside of us because we all have that still small voice that guides us into the next right step. So meditation is one of them. Self-work is one of them. Uh, So that's introspection is really thinking about, okay, what motivates me? Where am I stopped? What are my blocks? Exercise is one of the pillars. And this does not mean going to the gym and just beating yourself up on the the, uh, machines, but just leaning into it again, just getting outside, walking around the block briskly until that's so easy that you need to add in a little something else. But Wait till you really feel energized enough to add in something else, and then you add an incline, and then you add some weights maybe, or then you add on a hike. Another pillar, which I think is the, the, the mother pillar of all of them, is called conscious eating. And conscious eating means that you're aware of where your food comes from and how it feels, how it sits with you in your soul, in your body. 
for me, conscious eating meant, because I'd grown up eating so many animal foods like meats and dairy and eggs and all that stuff, I thought I want to be conscious about where it comes from. I want to really see what the process is. So I started watching videos and reading accounts of people who had gone undercover in slaughterhouses and egg-producing places, and I got really uncomfortable with what I was seeing. So I I decided I just wanted to be someone who didn't eat animal products. And so I just leaned away from it. And so I came in through that soul place of this doesn't sit right in my soul. I don't like to see any living being suffer, and I don't want to be part of that. But then when I started learning about all the health benefits of moving away from eating animals and eating only plant-based things, I got really inspired because I thought, oh, my gosh, my cholesterol can drop. I can lose weight. I can prevent the major chronic disease diseases like heart disease and stroke and type 2 diabetes and even some kinds of cancer. So that conscious eating is a really important pillar. And also service is a really important pillar because it makes you feel good about yourself. It makes you feel like you have something to offer and it gets the attention off of that sort of self-centered fear, how we just go round and round in this obsession about our lives. When we take ourselves out of that self-centered fear for a little bit, we help someone out, we do something positive for the world, even just a little bit, whether it's making a donation or volunteering for an hour a week, we get this self-esteem that just sort of, there's like a power that opens up in our chest. We feel sort of this life coursing through our body and we get powered up by that and that moves us forward. So all of these pillars work in tandem and we don't have to do them all at once, but we can just touch on them and realize that they're important aspects of our life and we can lean into these shifts ever so gently by just becoming aware and willing to move forward. The book is The Lean, a revolutionary and simple 30-day plan for healthy, lasting weight loss by Kathy Freston. If you'd like more information about Kathy and her work, you can visit her website, kathyfreston.com, or as always, you can visit our website, cyacyl.com. While on our site, listen to past shows as podcasts, read the digital magazine, take part in our book club, sign up for our mailing list, and be sure to follow the show on Facebook and Twitter. Kathy, thank you so much for for spending time with us, you are providing an approach that gives us the power to change anything in our lives when we take it slow and keep it manageable. So I want you to know that I'm leaning in. Thank you. Thank you, Joan. It was a pleasure. This is Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. I'm Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in.